join me at a very busy Welford Pools. Now it's been three months since I last uh, visited Welford Pools and uh, I was lucky enough to uh, nick a fish uh, through the hours of darkness but uh, yeah I'm back for another go. I've got uh, as I say 24 hours at my disposal before uh, next Friday when I have three weeks off in which I uh, intend on trying to fit in as much fishing as possible um, around sort of family time and, and whatever else. So yeah, I've squeezed in a uh, 24 hour session this weekend and uh, yeah, it is very, very busy. Just looking at the sort of immediate water that I've got, I can't really be disturbed and I can't really disturb anyone else, so obviously with my filming and whatnot. But what I like about this, this swim gives me a little bit of a open water access here but not only that I've got this nice big overhanging bushy tree which uh, comes out the best part of probably 12 13 foot from the actual edge of the bank but around there takes you into the channel which uh, obviously the fish can get in amongst and make their way from sort of this half of the, this half of the lake down the channel into obviously the other half there I think first and foremost what I'm going to do, just because it's ten, just gone sort of 10 o'clock, it is sort of maximum disturbance time now. I think I'm going to get the deeper on the, get the, deeper on the rod, give it a, a few flicks around just to get an idea on depths. I know that it's going to be probably massively clean out there, but I'm just looking for any sort of features that may be on the lake bed. So I don't have to worry about weed or sort of, you know, deep silt or anything like that because this has been, uh, you know, when they took this place over, it was freshly dug and stuff like that so all I'm looking for is some sort of features on the lake bed so I'm gonna get the deep route give it sort of half a dozen half a dozen casts just get an idea about sort of what the lake bed is like whether it's just uniformed or any sort of slightly raised areas that sort of thing any sort of features that may just give me an edge over everybody else and uh, yeah see what we've got down below and we can think of a little bit of a plan of attack so this is Jack uh, when was I, your birthday mate? Uh, July the 21st there you go so he's out on a birthday session with dad down at Welford's and uh, yeah like I say whilst we stood in the swim he's managed to uh, hook himself a fish he took it nice and calm because the fish managed to uh, snag him up on some debris on the bottom so let's have a look at your prize then mate show us what you got really nice pretty scaly sort of uh, three quarter linear really pretty fish get some water on him as well without flicking water all over the lens got him mate yeah let's have a look see how that looks on camera get him up a bit more mate that's it try and tilt get your hand if you can round to that one that's it it's all right it's all right it's because he ain't had that much of a fight try and get your yeah. this hand right round to there Get that finger in there, cut it, so cut that one there, cut that one there, and then just lift him up nice and slowly, mate. Put some water there we go. Yes, Dad, do some water. But yeah, look at this fish. Pretty, pretty fish. And uh, a result from uh, the margin where I fished three months ago. Just goes to show they do get into those little corners. What did you have that one on, Jack? Uh, I had it on some fake sweet corn. There you go, fake sweet corn. Didn't go too heavy with the baiting, no, just a, no, uh, a little bit. A little bit of bait just to yeah, get the bite. But yeah, look at that, what a cracking fish. Just zoom in on those scale patterns. Incredible looking fish. There you go, mate, what a result. Yeah. Get yourself down the shop, mate. I think you've earned yourself a uh, some new tackle from the shop. <laughs> well done, mate. Gonna weigh him now? Yeah, we'll weigh him. Is it all it from the back? You push it down into the water. There you go. Happy days, kid. I was just having a little uh, little plum around really with a deeper. Found a really nice sort of uh, just shy of four foot um, sort of raised area really. It's sort of five, between five and six foot around it. Really nice sort of uh, raised four foot, just under four foot raised area that I'm definitely going to be putting a rod on. Um, I've gonna stick one down the edge here off this tree maybe even try and poke it under if I can one way or another but one's definitely coming on under here because uh, I do feel that this will be a sort of patrol area from the channel of fish being able to come through and with this great big sort of overhanging tree coming down I definitely feel that they'll uh, you know 
go in there, a bit of sanctuary, and it's just a bit of a safe haven for them. So maybe trying to pick one off either sort of underneath somewhere um, or just off the edge of it is definitely um, an option to be explored. But yeah, there is a nice, uh, like I say, four foot raised area out in front of me in between a load of sort of five, five and a half, nearly six foot around it. So that is what I'm gonna do with my two rods. As you would have seen, Jack hooked into a fish and uh, unfortunately didn't get to enjoy the fight because it snagged him up on uh, a bit of sort of tree, section of a tree, branches, that sort of thing. But he played it really, really well and got it in. So yeah, really happy with that. I thought it was only fair that I went round, grabbed the camera, grabbed the video camera, got him on the video, took some nice pictures for him because he's actually out on his birthday session. So happy birthday, Jack. Um, it's probably a late one by the time that you've uh, seen this video and well done on your fish, mate. But uh, yeah, it's now time for me to get this lot sorted, get two rods sorted and actually start fishing myself. I thought I'd show you what I found. So there is that uh, very small sort of raised area that I was talking about that I found with the deeper. And as you can see, it uh, goes up to 3.7, 3.8 foot in depth. And as you can see that's the bottom behind it that's the bottom behind it so that is around the sort of five two five three I'll just move my hand as it goes and as you can see it goes right up to three three six three seven and you're going back down into the four foots and then it starts obviously to come up to the uh, come up to the margin so yeah the difference in uh, in that little feature there that little raised area may just be the difference um, between sort of me getting a bite or not it's not just anything that's just flat obviously there are uh, there is a hump there it's pretty obvious i just sort of flicked bare lead on it bare lead on it just a moment ago and uh yeah there is literally no no debris on the bottom at all but it's certainly the reason why i wanted to chuck the deeper out just to find something like that in front of me for my other rod. up a couple of solid bags I will talk you through how I've got the uh, solid bag set up a little bit later on because I've made a slight change on this session so uh, yeah I will talk you through that later but two solid bag made both with my ever faithful sea monster wafter hook baits crammed full of uh, pellet mini mix tied off at the top and ready to be dropped out onto those two spots last half hour or so getting that lot sorted in pretty good timing because uh, yeah it's just started to uh, just started to rain the rev weather report has been saying rain off and on all day didn't think it was going to materialize but um, yeah I'm glad I uh, decided to get that up in time just in case this turns into anything heavy if the last couple of days are anything to go by then um, yeah you could be drenched within minutes so uh, hopefully it doesn't turn into anything anything too heavy but yeah everything's out everything's sorted i can chill out for a bit now and um, the rods like i said are tucked right back from the edge and fishing in nice and close and i've got the brolly tucked right back at the back of the swim just so that i can keep any sort of disturbance nearer the water's edge right down to a minimum so uh i think now is as good a time as any to uh, get the kettle on sit down relax see how the rest of the afternoon pans out and I'll redo those rods just before dark and probably put a little bit of bait over the top of them as well just to see me through the night. This session I am using the uh, Codex 
leadless liquid leaders. Now these allow me to still fish solid bags but without the tubing and without the stems but still fitting in with the fisheries rules of not using sort of lead core etc. Now the Codex liquid leaders they come in a pack of two as you can see mud brown so they've got sort of like a darker brown and sort of a, a creamy fleck to them which is perfect for this type of lake bed it's muddy sort of clay you know it's still relatively fresh down there and you get quite a quite a good drop in most areas but this will just fit in with any sort of debris debris from the trees around as well this sort of just muddy brownie darky color will just sort of fit in with the lake bed that I'm fishing over but not only that I've uh, also got some of the weed green ones as well um, I do like to fish a weedy water and uh, again these will be perfect for uh, just fitting in with obviously what's in and around on the lake bed. These ones already come with a uh, sort of mud brown lead clip on them. But what I've done for this session is uh, just open them up and uh, essentially just remove the lead clip from them because I want to use them on my solid bags. The lead clip doesn't need to be on there. So taking them out of the packaging. They come in one, one metre lengths, which is perfect for you know, having that little bit of extra safety net from uh, having such a you know a long a long leader really does pin it down and sort of hug the contours of the lake bed. They come pre-spliced at one end with a loop, which is great because I'm absolutely rubbish at splicing uh, sort of lead core, lead core or sort of this lead, leadless material. As I mentioned, it's got the uh, lead clip on the end, muddy brown colour, and then a quick change swivel, which is perfect because that is exactly what I like when I want to loop on my solid bag rig. So what I've done then is essentially just slid off the lead clip all the way down the leader, off the other end, and pop that inside my tackle box. I've then got my inline pair lead, Got a baiting needle, popped it through, hooked on the loop of the leader, like so. Just hooked on the little hook of the baiting needle and pulled it through. So now the leader is running through the center of the lead and then just pulling it down and pulling the swivel inside the lead, like so. I will then take my rig. And as you'll see, the rig has a loop on the end, which will tied is a sort of three and a half inch, really supple, solid bag rig. All you need to do, loop the rig over the uh, quick change swivel, pull it down like so, slide over the mini anti-tankle sleeve, and that is ready then to be stuck inside a solid bag, tucked into the corner, filled up with pellets, licked and sticked, and ready to be cast out you do get one meter of this leader material now if you are a dab hand at uh, splicing there's no reason why you can't sort of double it over cut it off that end splice a couple of loops in you've doubled how much uh, how much material that you can play with so creating yourself an extra you know two shorter lengths of uh, leader material or even if you wanted to go over again and have some real short ones for sort of solid bags splice some uh, again some loops and some swivels at each end and uh, yeah you could pretty much get four smaller leaders out of one so uh that will allow you to prepare then your solid bags in, in advance the, the, you know, the night before your session. Have them all ready. If you go into a sort of runs water where you need to have bags and stuff made up, then like I say, just uh, halving, halving the material or halving it again will allow you to get, like I say, either an additional two or four more leaders out of the one meter that you already get in the pack. Got this uh, sort of tree chunk of wood there. You know, you rub that down there as hard as you can if you're fishing sort of up close and personal like me on this session this is this isn't getting damaged at all no fraying no nicks no marks no nothing and that is really going to stand up to any sort of uh, up close and personal snaggy battles that you might have rubbing up against trees or anything like that look at that not a mark on it super super strong and uh 
I will have the utmost confidence flicking that out up against sort of like that tree that I'm fishing up against to up against to myself this session and I know that that's going to stand strong and uh, not going to you know, cr create any nicks or any damage to it and I'm going to be able to self safely land that fish. And the great thing about them is that you can switch between a lead clip setup, a solid bag setup. Sometimes I vary that throughout my session depending on the venue. If I move swims and you know the bottom isn't as clean where I want to put a solid bag and I do need to revert back to a lead clip setup, it's just a case of uh, using your bait and needle to just literally slide that back on with the uh, leader running through the middle back onto the uh, back onto the swivel. And like I say, you can have a leg clip set up or a solid bag set up within seconds. So if you are looking for a, a way around the sort of lead core bands on your waters, but you can still use leaders um, outside of obviously tubing, then uh, yeah, well worth looking at these uh, liquid leaders. I'm certainly going to be putting them to use more in my fishing. Um, but obviously reverting back to the tubing where I need to but just to finish off as I say I had a nice short supple three three and a half inch rig the uh, sea monster pink solid bag wafters as always they are my uh, my get out of jail hook baits when it comes to solid bags I do have others with me and if I feel I need to switch them up then I will do but I always start with these pink solid bag little uh, sea monster wafters and uh, just down to a uh, barbless wide gape hook size 6 a little bit of shrink tubing on the eye of the hook and the shank just to help with uh, keeping that hook bait in place and that is my setup for this uh, 24 hour session oh wow what a result just sat there in the uh, sat there in the brolly doing a little talk to camera about the sort of uh, setup that I've used today sort of terminal tackle wise and the left hand rod going over to the tree just behind me it's absolutely hooped over. Look at this for a cracking looking fish. Proper spawned out. Got a right flat tummy on him. Probably gonna give me a bit of a scrap on the map because uh, he didn't actually do much out uh, out in the margins. Just kind of plodded around underneath the, uh, underneath the rod tip. Managed to tame him with me old 10 footer. But look at him for a scaly fish. Bop it along, spawned out. Welfords, Cotswold Carp, look at that one, mega scales on him, such a pretty fish, well happy with that, really wasn't expecting it to go soon into the session, um, just because obviously there's been a bit of disturbance and whatnot, so uh, yeah, really didn't expect it to happen, but it's looking promising, going into, uh, going into the evening, in the night, and obviously tomorrow morning, so well happy with that, quickly show you the other side, Solid bags doing the business as per usual. But what? Very nice looking carp. And this is exactly the sort of stamp of fish that you come to Welford's for. If you've heard of Bramble Mia, then uh, this is pretty much a replica in the shape of uh, what sort of fish you're going to be after when coming down and fishing this place. Happy days. Let's reel off a few snaps. Slip it back, get our rope back out. What a uh, result that was. I was not expecting that. But uh, another great thing about uh, using these leaders is that whilst obviously the fish is in the net, you can just bite the line or cut the line down near the loop end of the leader and that way you don't have to worry about your rod still you know carrying your rod and your net over to the mat area you can just safely bite the line and you're just left with your leader and obviously the rig in the uh, fish's mouth and then you can safely transfer the fish over to your mat area and deal with him um, you know as you need to and then just popping your leader and your rig aside whilst you get your photos etc and then bring it back to your uh, bucket or your bivvy get it all retied like this one ready to get back out so I'm gonna sit, stick this straight back on the spot and hopefully we can nick ourselves another one so, uh, 
I just got that left hand rod back out after that fish. Ten minutes later, right hander rattles off. Got a really nice fish in the uh, net, but as you can see, it is absolutely lashing down. But look at him, absolute result. Taking off that uh, short rod that was um, on top of that, you know, shallower plateau. But look at that! Give me a great scrap underneath the uh, underneath the rod tip. Wiped out my uh, wiped out my other rod that I literally just put out. So I've just had to redo that again in the rain. But I am not complaining. Two fish within the hour. Oh, get in there! Let's have a look at this side. Really, really clean fish. Really clean fish. But look at him. Ooh. Give me a fight now because he's been resting in the net for sort of five minutes just as I got myself sorted in the rain. But yeah, look at this one. Well happy. Look at the scale line. Lush. Such a nice looking fish. So happy with that. Ah, oh, buzzing, buzzing, buzzing. Let's get a rod sorted, get it back out. Might be a chance of a few more. In the, uh, sat in the brolly, I was hearing fish crash out in the swim next door, peg number 17. said to myself, if I hear one more show, one more bosh, I'm going to have one of the rods in and come and drop it in to number 17. Look what happened. Got one in the net already. I literally lowered down a solid bag, probably about three minutes I reckon, and uh, yeah, it's gone. Got a really nice little scaly mirror in there. But yeah, what a result. Was not expecting it to go that quick. Um, but end of day it's another bite so let's get it out on the mat and have a little look well happy with that so yeah that solid bag was probably out there for all of a few minutes I watched the uh, line start to uh, trickle off the spool and then the uh, spool started to spin this one was attached well happy free fish and still plenty of time left into the session I don't think there's going to be anything left uh, down in the swim next door because this one led me a merry led, oh, led me a merry dance whilst he was down there. He put up a proper good scrap. I'll just quickly show you this other side. But yeah, look at that. Well happy, solid bag, pink sea monster woof the hook bait. As per usual, happy days. Yeah, it's a little after eight o'clock now. Uh, I've been up since around sort of half five, quarter to six. Really, really quiet night. Nothing happened, not even a single beep. But um, there were plenty of shows going into sort of darkness, so I was actually feeling uh, feeling quite hopeful of a of a bite. But um, but yeah, it just didn't happen for for one reason or another. Um, this morning I have seen shows, but they have been like right over on the opposite bank, right underneath the sort of canopies of sort of bankside vegetation like you'd need a, a baiting pole or something like that to get anywhere closely remotely to them um, yeah they have pushed right up to the edges and similarly down to, uh, sort of two swims down as well they've been showing right up tight to the bank so um, 
so yeah I don't know if they're just sort of they've just pushed out feeling the pressure or, or what but they're definitely like I say right up tight to the margins so uh, so yeah just like I say a quiet night unfortunately but I've started to uh, pack everything down now um, sort of like I say into the last couple of hours so I'm gonna run the risk that it doesn't rain and hoping to keep everything dry um, just kind of drying off the mat and all that sort of business try and get home in some sort of uh, orderly tidy dry fashion hopefully but uh but yeah not a lot really to report so i'm just going to chill out for the next couple of hours probably get the kettle on and uh i'll probably check in with you just before i leave hopefully between then and now one of those two rattle off The uh, barrow loaded up, rods are on the deck, they are about to come in in the next sort of 10 minutes. But uh, yeah, like I say, nothing really has happened this morning. But uh, I am more than happy with the free fish that I've caught. So yeah, I, for this place, that's really good going. It can be tricky um, at the best of times. So uh, yeah, coming away with free fish in 24 hours, I'm massively happy with that. So yeah, couldn't have asked for a, uh, a better 24 hours really. So. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. As always, give me a like, comments. Don't forget to subscribe. And uh, yeah, as always, come and get in touch over on my social media. Um, feel free to drop me any messages um, in regards to if you want any sort of further info on the venue itself. Um, I'll try and help you best I can. But uh, yeah, as always, like I say, thanks for watching. And we will catch up next time I am out on the bank.